Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one we're going to be continuing with the RPG tutorial series. This video we're going to be focusing on making the interaction system so that we're able to have the player walk up to, for example, an NPC when we end up sorting out like doing the vendor system and shops. And also so you can walk up to chests to loot them, you can walk up to doors to open them, that kind of system. We want to implement that by making essentially a class that interacts with interactables. Uh, make an abstract class for, you know, interactables or make an interface. And then we can derive from that to have all the different types of logic. So, uh, hope you enjoy this video, hope you stick around, uh, let's get into it. But of course, first I gotta thank my patrons, with special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Budere, Thomas Huster, Remy Baldwin, and Phil Baum. If anyone else here is able to help support the channel monetarily, then the link is in the description below. If not, you can help support me on social media by following me on Twitch, subscribing on YouTube, joining the Discord server, Twitter, all the links are down below. That'd be greatly appreciated. Now let's get into the video. Okay, so last time we ended up by implementing the movement code. So now we can, um, oh, we also move the camera around. So we have the camera panning around the cam uh, the character. Uh, obviously the cursor is still visible, but we'll worry about that some other time. It still works. Um, obviously if I walk forwards and move my camera around, it still works right, left, backwards. It's all relative to where I'm going. Um, so yeah, that's all working now. We can start, you know, putting stuff in the world. So we can have like a chest. We walk up, press E, and a window pops up, and then that window has loot. We click on the loot, and then it goes into our inventory that we've made. Um, yeah, let's let's start doing the interaction. Okay, so for this video, we're going to need to make a few scripts. So I've made a folder called Interactables. We're going to need to have an interactor script for the player or anything that can interact. So maybe you want some enemies that can like you know, interact with um, doors or something. I, I don't know, you'd have to set that up a bit differently, but you would be able to reuse some of the classes. Obviously, the whole point is make stuff generic enough to be reusable, but there's always, um, you know, some differences with the player and the enemy, so you might have to, like, derive um, one for the player and one for the enemy version. For now, we're just going to assume it's the player, so I'm just going to write interactor. And how that's going to work is it's going to basically um, raycast for the colliders or, or we can use a collider itself like a trigger collider on enter and effectively when um, we go near a an interactable so a chest or a door or whatever it'll then detect that and then if we press an input key such as you know e to interact usually games use e or f or r one of those keys um, will then you know basically run the logic on the thing itself to do its thing so if it's a chest it might you know give us an item if it's a door it'll open and so on and so forth so we need to make the base class interactor. We're going to make an interface for I interactable. So I interactable. And then obviously we might want to make like an example for uh, this video. So let's just, um, we'll, we'll just do test interactable for now before we actually make like the NPC and stuff. So test interactable. So this class test interactable, we're probably going to get rid of in a future video when we don't need it anymore, but it's, it's a good way to, you know, test our system. So let's quickly uh, make a cube and let's just go and move it to 0.5 and then go and uh, shove it over here or something. So it's at like minus four, uh, minus three. It doesn't have to be out of the ground, but you know, you know what I mean? So the player's going to, essentially when we press play, we want to be able to uh, walk up to our object, which is over here and press E to interact with it and let it do its thing. So we need like a range of interaction. Um, and that's the thing, it's up to you. Do you want it so that, for example, if you're standing like this, you can interact, and if you're standing like that, you can't? In which case, it makes sense to either do a raycast from the player's like body, physically, or we can um, use trigger colliders. It's really up to you if you want to do raycast or collider. I'm not actually 100% certain on the performance differences, Believe me, like if you're just having this one raycast or one collider on the player, you know it's not going to be noticeable at all. Um, but yeah, let's just remember this cube itself also has to be, you know, it has to have a collider of some kind on it. So we're just going to make it a non-trigger collider because it's you know a physical object. And let's start writing the code now. Okay, so once you've opened up your code in your editor of choice, we need to do some quick changes. So what I've done, like just off camera quickly, is I've added in my namespace. We need to make sure the interactor is just a normal mono behavior class, so that's good to go. Um, the I interactable is not a mono behavior, so we get rid of that. And it's actually an interface, so we just change class to say interface. Um, but with the add-on I've got, it actually autofills that. 
Let's me let me zoom in again for you guys. Actually, that's a bit too far in, I think. Okay, that's that's fine. You guys can read it. I can see on OBS it looks okay. So we got our interface for our interactable, the interactor class, and test interactable inherit from interactable. Oh sorry. I interactable. But it also has to be a mono behavior, so make sure you've still got mono behavior there, comma, I interactable. Um, we're not going to get any errors yet because the interactable interface doesn't actually define anything yet. So what we want for now is anything that's interactable has to have a function with no return called interact. That takes in no parameters. Now obviously if we ever need to change that to say actually it should have a function uh, also called um, like on enter for when we get close to the interactable or something to, I don't know, maybe raise... Um, Maybe we want it to highlight the item or like bring up some text or something to say like what you're interacting with. Like in games usually when you go to interact with something it'll say like E, talk to NPC or whatever. Um, so we can change that but for now all we care about is interactables can be interacted with. So we've got a no return interact function. Now of course the test interactable is going to tell us, um, doesn't implement the interface. So we need to, well I can just, you know, you can auto auto implement it, just delete the uh, exception code. So now we need to write, you know, what does the test interactable do on interaction? Well, you know, for the sake of this, I'm just going to say a test interactable has a string. So serialized so field private string uh, interaction text equals, um, well, you know, hello or something. And then we're going to say debug.log hello. No, sorry, debug.log um, interaction message, right? And that can be our test, right? That's just our way of testing. So we need to now build a system to be able to call this function when looking at this object, right? And we press a key like E or something. Um, so let's close test interactable. I'm actually just going to go ahead when it's compiled and drop it on the cube. So this is a test interactable with its text of hello. Maybe it should be like in all caps, it works, you know, just to just to know it works. I'll open the console as well. Um, now for the player, he needs to be an interactor. Now, as I said, we can do with raycast or we can do with trigger. If you do a raycast, um, obviously it's from a specific point on the player. So the main problem of a raycast is that, let's say we did it on the player's like chest. What if we want to interact with something on the ground? You know, it's a problem. So we're probably gonna end up using colliders now, by default, the player has his uh, collider like this, but that's not really good enough for interaction. You know, usually you want to interact with things before you are standing on them. So we should also add a, another collider to the player, a trigger sphere collider that's quite big. Um, currently, we've got the joints and stuff. I'm going to also add an em another empty game object onto him called like, interactor or something. This interactor is just going to have a sphere collider on it. And we're going to obviously position it at the player's uh, center and then make it, you know, a bit bigger than the player. So we can interact with things perhaps at a, you know, 1.25 radius. It really depends. We'll see how that feels. And obviously you can always tweak that. Uh, it's a trigger collider like so. And I think I already set up the layers in a previous video. Let me just go and look at layers. So we go to edit project settings layers. Um, if I stop being blind. So on layers, we haven't actually set any up yet. So the thing is, we don't want this trigger collider to uh, set off enemy projectiles, right? If an enemy shoots at us with like a fireball or something and it gets into the circle, we don't want to, you know, have that collision happen because that's not the player's hitbox. This is simply the player's interaction range. So what we want to do is we want to make a layer um, just for interactables, right? Uh, so we can just make this layer be uh, interaction or something or interactable it's on the interactable layer and then all we need to do now is when we make projectiles and stuff like that uh, we'll put that on its own layer so we'll have um, you know projectile and we'll just make it so in the collision matrix which is under physics we're going to on physics 2D, just turn them all off because we don't need, we're not doing 2D, so we don't need any of these collisions ever being accounted for by the physics system. That can help performance, probably not a lot, but it'll help a little bit. Though on physics 3D, if you're making a 3D game and stuff, 
if you actually do these layers correctly, um, you can improve performance quite a bit, actually. Like uh, People have done FPS tests, and it's, it's noticeable. So what you want to do is, usually, this is the way I do it, I leave all the default on, because you know default is what stuff gets given by default. Then I just turn off the transparent VFX, ignore raycasts, water, UI. And then down here with my custom layers, I actually set them properly. So do interactables collide with projectiles? No. Do interactables collide with interactables? Not really. Um, and do projectiles collide over projectiles? Perhaps, maybe, maybe they do. So I don't know, should I leave that on for now? I'm gonna leave it on for now. We'll think about that later when we make combat. Uh, you can make, for example, if a projectile is a trigger collider, you can make it only collide on certain like layers, which is probably a better way to do it because it allows you to make spells that maybe it's a projectile that you use to take out other enemy projectiles or whatever you want. But yeah, this interactor on the player now will have the interactor script on it. Now when we go back in, we can see there's our player's hitbox and his interaction range. Cool. Okay, now we have to think about what an interactor is and what it does. So an interactor uh, handles input, so that'll be on update, right? So we need an update function. There we go. Um, so we, we basically say every frame, we want to check for input. So we'll say if input.getKeyDown. I'm just gonna hard code this for now because we're, in, we're gonna end up having a an input system anyway like handling it externally. But for now, if input.key down E, we're gonna go with the E key. Essentially, we want to interact with the current interactable. If we have a current interactable, that is. So really, we, before we even do this if check, we should just do a check for um, whether the interactable is null. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say here, we need a private I interactable current um, interactable, right? So by default, it's null. We don't have one. When we get close to one, it'll set it equal to this. Like this will be set equal to that interactable. And then when we leave it, it'll you know get set back again. So we're gonna need uh, on trigger enter and on trigger exit, which are called when um, you know we enter and exit of the colliders. So now what we can do is when we say. Uh, checking for our key code. Before we even need to check for a key code, we can just easily check if something's null. So we'll say if the current interactable is null, return. Now I don't like calling return in update functions because what if we want to have more logic in the update function? That's why it makes sense to bring it out into its own function. So I'm going to make private void uh, check for interact. Interaction? Check for interaction? Yeah, we'll go with that. And all we need to do then is put that in here and then just say in update check for interaction. So then instead of re returning from the update function, we turn from the uh, check for interaction function. I need to paste in that code. Sorry, I just messed up. Um, oh, I, I paste it into the trigger function, oops. Oh, okay, so if we press E, we wanna say interactable, or sorry, current interactable dot interact. Obviously it has the interact function because we wrote that in the interface um, and then we'll let the thing itself handle what happens when we interact with it. Cool. Uh, we can get rid of the imports at the top. I've already done that there. I've already done that there. Okay, so it's just this class for the rest of the video. So when we enter a new interactable, what do we want to do? Uh, this is kind of up to you as well. I had this problem a while back thinking, well, what if you walk near a chest and then there's another chest directly next to it? Which one do you interact with? The one that you walked next to first or last, even if you're still in range of both of them? I prefer to have it um, be the one you've like most recently entered. So if you, for example, bringing out paint again, if you uh, were the player and you'd like found you know a chest here, I don't have to do this great, and you walk up to it, and then there's like another chest right next to it, right? You get you get the point. Um, and let's say you walk up and you're in range of both of them. So say you walk to like here or something. I would say if you walk forward to them right, but you're still in range of both, this should be the one that's highlighted. And once you've got it, obviously you then re-highlight that one. Um, so what we really want to do, at least for now, I mean, I'm sure if, if you want to make it like cleaner, you can, but I'm just going to say when we enter anything, uh, we're going to basically say I interactable is equal to other dot get component I interactable, right? I'm actually just gonna put um, well, var interactable. 
I've started using var in the case where you can clearly see on the line what type it's going to be, because it saves you typing out the whole class name, especially when they get longer. If, if it's not obvious on the line what it's going to be, like if you don't see the class type on that line, I would still use the class type so that it's much easier to read to know what it is. But me writing I interactable interactable equals other dot get component interactable is just kind of like a big mouthful. It doesn't change performance at all putting var. I mean, technically compile time might be like, you know, minutely slower because it has to figure that out, but it's already figured it out anyway. If you mouse over var, it tells you it's of type interactable. It's a preference thing in C sharp. Um, I've just kind of got used to it. You know, it helps you code a bit faster, I guess, because um, you don't have to type out long class names. It makes your lines not ridiculously long or complex. But yeah, I like using var, just a quick side note there. And then, yeah, so we say basically get the interactable component on the thing we've collided with. We're going to say if um, interactable is null, return, because obviously if it's, we don't care if we've walked into something that isn't interactable. And then um, if, it's, if it isn't null, if it exists, then we're just going to set it equal to our uh, current interactable. So we're just going to say current interactable equals the interactable. And then um, on trigger exit, the only time we actually want to do anything on exit is if the thing we've exited is interactable and it's the same one we've currently got like selected. So we're going to say um, var interactable is, you know, get interactable. Um, if interactable is null, return, because we don't care. And then we'll say um, if interactable is equal to current interactable, right? Um, if the interactable is not the current one, return as well. I actually can't remember if you could just ignore this line having this one, but it might give you a null reference error because it's null. So I think it's best to have a null check first. I don't know that might be necessary. Someone can let me know otherwise. I could have just tested it, but I don't want to waste time testing that. Um, it'll work absolutely fine anyway. So yeah, if interactable is not the same. So at this point, if we get to this line, we know the thing we've just left is interactable and it is the thing we've currently got selected. So we've actually just left our thing we're in range of. So we're just going to then say current interactable is equal to null essentially clearing it, right? So uh, every frame we check for interaction, but we actually, we actually only do that if um, we're in range. So, and then obviously when we enter something, if it's interactable, um, then we're gonna set it. And if it's not, if, if we're leaving and it's interactable and it's the same one, then we say null. Let's go give that a test, right? So we might have a slight problem with this and I know the fix, so we'll be absolutely fine if we do get it. But let's go give it a test first. So in the scene view, you'll see Let's highlight the player in the cube, right? I'm going to put the game view here. Hopefully you guys can see this well. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to go up to our cube, right? And now we're definitely in range. We press E. And you notice how we don't actually um, have the thing coming up in the chat. And that's because of the rigid body. So basically rigid bodies, even though you might think they're used for physics and gravity, which they are, um, you also need the rigid body on at least one of the two things that have the collider on. So I think it makes sense rather than putting a rigid body on everything in the scene that's interactable because they'll usually not be using physics anyway. It makes sense to have one on the player rather than loads on loads of objects. So let's go to the player's interactor. It has to be on the same thing as the collider. So we're just going to put a rigid body on here. And this rigid body, you know, leave it the same mass. It doesn't matter because we're just going to turn off gravity. Uh, you know, collision detection can be discrete. It doesn't need to be like ultra fast collision detection like you would on a fast projectile because it's just interaction. Constraints, non, info, whatever. It, it's all fine. Leave drag if you want. You can disable it. You know, it doesn't matter. Just, just whatever. And then now it should work. Let's uh, go to the player, apply, and uh, just for my own sake, I'm going to move the rigid body up. I've mentioned this a lot, but I like having my custom written scripts at the bottom of the built-in Unity scripts. So let's go and interact now. Do -ba -do. Press E, and you see we get it works. It works, it works, it works, it works. And if I walk away and press E, we've now lost reference of the thing. As we get in range, it starts working again when I spam E. So now we can actually interact with things. Um, if you wanted, right, like as I said earlier, you might want to only interact with things that you're facing, right, rather than um, things just right in front of you, which I think is actually a better idea. 
So we can now go, now that it all works, and tweak the collider to your liking, right? So I'm just going to do this quickly. Um, you know, you could use a, you could use a cube uh, collider instead of a sphere if you wanted to. If you're doing something just in front of the player, it makes more sense to use a uh, like a cube collider. So I'm going to go and tweak the interactor, and I'll resume the video in a minute. You guys can do this too. Okay, I'm back. So I've had a fiddle with it. I basically used a box collider, as you can see here, uh, interactor. Here are my settings if you want to copy the same. I've just made it the same um, height and center and stuff as the uh, player controller, but obviously it's a cube. I mean, you could have used the capsule if you wanted to, but the cube probably be more performant because it has less um, vertices, less edges, all the stuff. I don't know exactly the counts, but the point is, cube's probably better to use. I've made it the width of the player pretty much, um, obviously assuming the arms were down. You could make it wider. It's up to you, right? I, I don't want to sit here and tell you this is the way you must do it because it's up to you. But the point is it still works, right? We can interact with the box collider thing. So if we go back to the scene, I'll actually just uh, make it so we can see the player and the cube. Let's move over here and bring up the console. So let's just clear the console. Um, let's walk over to the interactable. So as you see, as I'm getting closer, I'm not in range right now, I'm not in range right now. But as I get to this range, it works, right? It works. I'm facing it. As I turn away, even though I'm still like in range like closeness wise, it doesn't interact with it because I'm not facing it. But now I am, and it works. So there you go. Um, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this. This allows us to now, you know, start making chests and NPCs, vendors, interactable quest systems. You know, having an interaction system like this is, uh, you know, kind of important to get everything going because you can actually do stuff. Uh, you can pick things up and whatever because I've made it on the, you know, reach the floor as well so we can pick up things on the ground. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, obviously feel free to leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean a lot. Share this with your friends. Get this around everywhere. Um, social media down below, Patreon down below, everything's there. I don't need to say it all again. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.